Right, for our lesson today, we want to finish our rules of integration. Just a reminder of what those are. Uh, the last thing I want to look at, though, with these rules is how to find that constant of integration. Okay, how do you find the constant C? Now, this is really the key to when we know the derivative, finding the original function. Okay, and you'll notice here that we're given that the derivative is 2 sine x minus the square root of x, and we're given a point on the original function, the point 0, 4. So, the integral of the derivative is going to be the original function, okay? The problem is we don't know what the constant part of that original function might have been, and that could be any of an infinite number of possibilities. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the integral of 2 sine x minus the square root of x dx, and when we take that integral, we know the integral of sine is negative cosine, so we have a negative 2 cosine x. And the integral of x to the 1 half is 2 thirds x to the 3 halves. Remember, you add 1 to the exponent and multiply by the reciprocal of the new exponent. All right, and then you have the plus c. All right, so that, again, equals our f of x. All right, so here's where our point comes in. All right, we have f of 0 equals 4, and that means that whenever we plug in 0 for x, the entire thing will equal 4. So we have this constant. We have negative 2 cosine of 0 minus 2 times 0 to the 3 halves all over 3. And you'll notice here this whole thing equals 0. The cosine of 0 is 1, so we have a negative 2 times 1, so negative 2 plus c equals 4, and that means that c has to equal 6. Okay? c equals 6. So now we know our original function our original function is f of x equals negative 2 cosine x minus 2 x to the 3 halves over 3 plus 6. And that's our original function. Okay? This right here could have gone through an infinite number of y-intercepts. They gave us the y-intercept was 4 in this case because it was a point zero four. So to hit that y-intercept, it had to have this plus 6 at the end. Okay? So that's how we can take a derivative, integrate it, and figure out what that constant value is, that constant of integration. Okay? Here's another one. You'll notice in this case we're given the second derivative. We want to find the original function again, so we need to figure out the constant when we integrate the first time because the integral of the second derivative is going to be the first derivative. Okay? So we're going to use this same process that we just used. Um, I'm going to integrate 12x squared minus 4 with respect to x, and that's going to give me 12x cubed over 3, so 12 over 3 is 4. So I have a 4x cubed minus 4x plus c. And I'll call this one c1 since I'm going to do two steps here. All right, so. Now we're going to use this point, okay? I know that when x is 0, so I have 0 cubed minus 4 times 0 plus this first constant, this whole thing has to equal a negative 1. So obviously 
the constant here then equals negative 1 because all this cancels to 0. So now I know what my first derivative is. My first derivative is the function 4x cubed minus 4x minus 1. Because now I can put the negative 1 in for c1. So the next step here, I'm also given a point on the original function. Now that I have the integral, I can, or the first derivative, I can integrate that plug in the point 1, 4, and I can figure out what my original function is. All right, so let's bring this down. We're going to integrate the derivative to get the original function. So I'm integrating 4x cubed minus 4x minus 1 with respect to x. That's going to be 4x to the 4th over 4, so that's just x to the 4th minus 4x squared over 2, 4 over 2 is 2, so I have 2x squared minus 1x plus c, and I'll call this one c2 since it's the second one we're finding. And now again, we have this point 1, 4 that we're going to substitute in, okay? I know that this will equal the original function, so the original function equals 4 when x equals 1. So 1 to the 4th minus 2 times 1 squared minus 1 times 1 plus c2. This is a negative 2 plus c2. So c2 must equal 6. And now I know my original function f of x equals x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus x plus 6. Okay? So, we were able to start with the second derivative, integrate and plug in a point to get the first derivative, and then integrate and plug in another point to get the original function. One key here is make sure when you do these steps, notice when I was trying to find the first derivative, I had to use the point that was on the first derivative. Okay, that's why I plugged in the 0 and the negative 1. When I was finding the original function, I had to use the point that was on the original function to plug in to get the C2. Okay? So, one last example here. I want you to pause the video here, try this one on your own, and then I'll do it for you. Okay, so pause it now. Alright, so now that you've tried it yourself, let's go ahead and work this one through. I'm going to integrate x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3 with respect to x. This is going to give me x to the 4th over 4 minus 2x cubed over 3 plus 3x plus c. That will equal my original function. To figure out what c is, I have the point where x is 0, f of x is 2. So I'm plugging in a 2 for the f of x. And I'm plugging in a 0 everywhere I have x. So it's 0 over 4 minus 0 over 3 plus 3 times 0. All of this is 0. C equals 2. And that means my original function, f of x, is x to the 4th over 4 minus 2x cubed over 3 plus 3x plus 2. Okay? So there's our final answer. Alright, so take the rest of the period here. Practice with some of these. Okay? Number 2, and then later on here in uh, section 18e, we have these ones where you're given a derivative and a point, find the original function, 
Again, here you're given the derivative in a point, and then here's a couple where you're given the second derivative and points on the derivative and on the original function, okay? Um, so, give those a try, finish them for the independent practice, and we'll take a look at them uh, tomorrow.